Thanks, Evan, for once again the uh, amazing job you've done in uh, bringing uh, this incredible event. Um, delighted to see this year you've brought the Mayor's Conference together with the ESHIP Conference because uh, I think there's going to be lots of synergies that you're going to learn from each other. Uh, but as always, whenever I'm here in this great city, I, I like to acknowledge Mr. Kaufman. Almost everything that we get to do is, is uh, really done in his name. It's his name that's inspired people in all 170 countries that we operate. Uh, to be able to uh, reach and reach down, dig deep, reach high, uh, figure out how they can uh, birth the new, figure out new ways of doing things, and especially in environments where there's great poverty and a lack of resources. And so uh, it is great, uh, with, a, with, a, with, with a great uh, emphasis, I thank uh, the Coffin Foundation for uh, their uh, decades of work they're doing in inspiring us and guiding us and providing this thought leadership. Um, so, so thank you very much, Kaufman. We, we really need to make sure that we say that. All right, so I've just got a couple of questions that uh, Evan asked me to cover today. So I'm going to do exactly what I was asked to do in the email, which is I'm going to answer the question, why should mayors be thinking global? Uh, and secondly, if you're interested, how and what are the kinds of things that you can do? And we're going to conclude with uh, a very specific example, which is we're going to talk about the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the policy canvas as one tool you can do to begin to shape your thinking around what you're going to do uh, as a policymaker uh, in your local ecosystem. But before I get down to that local level, I do want to have a chance to begin with this, this, this question of why and to be able to state a few things that are fairly obvious. If you're following the news, you're following what's happening in NATO, but whether you look at Trump or whether you look at Brexit or whether you look at uh, uh, what's going on in our disruption of our traditional uh, uh, business models, you have to admit there is a great deal of uncertainty, uh, there's a lack of predictability, but most importantly, everything is going at a million miles an hour. And it's not just the fact that your White House is, uh, seems to be on a different thing every single day of the week. It's the fact that your entrepreneurs are doing this too. People are measuring things in minutes, in hours, in days. They're not doing it in terms of months or years, as, 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 as was the case. You're also seeing a massive amount of transparency. Um, you know, information-rich grassroots communities. So everybody pretty much has access to, to a substantial amount of information, which means that now everybody can see what's going on. You're seeing um, a, a great deal of disruption occurring, but it, the entrepreneurs have now finished dealing with the easy stuff. Um, there's no more uh, emphasis on how do I invent another app to deliver the dog food uh, in uh, two hours rather than two days. Um, these armies of entrepreneurs, that things like Global Entrepreneurship Week and Startup Weekend and many other programs that the Coffin Foundation has seeded, has created a whole generation of people that are innovating and creating an army. And I tell you, this army is across the world. Now they're applying their work to the really hard stuff. They're going into industries that are semi-regulated. And once they start doing that, as every single one of you know, no matter how much you know about this field, you've all heard of Uber and Airbnb. And if you're a mayor, if you're a city, whether you're the mayor of Paris or whether you're the mayor of a small town of America, you now have these issues on your doorstep. And so do the entrepreneurs. And as Steve Case says when he does his Rise of the Rest trip across the country, if you're an entrepreneur and you're not following public policy, whether that be what your mayors are doing or whether that be what your national government's doing, you're not going to succeed. You have to follow public policy as an entrepreneur. That's a different message to 15 years ago when entrepreneurs were told, stay away from government. Okay. So now I've told you you're center stage, whether you like it or not, because the disruptors are here and they're here to talk to you about regulatory issues, but they're now wanting jobs, they're wanting innovation, but they're willing to create them and they need you, as the Coffin Foundation has emphasized, to help them remove the barriers, to be able to remove some of the, the, the barriers they're facing to be able to do their thing. Or as, uh, to, as, as Victor said last night, to get stuff done, uh, which I love. I'm gonna go on talking about getting stuff done. So what we're in is you're now living in this world where you're flying by the seat of your pants. So now, how do I make sure that you're already competitive in this world? And that's the number one thing around why you're using entrepreneurs to remain competitive, because you know what? Entrepreneurs relish uncertainty. They love to build airplanes in the air. They love the idea of we're going through this notion of, um, of uh, no, everyone's shaken up the box, all the rules have changed. They're not frightened of that, they see opportunity in that. And most of us in our traditional lives, we get scared of uncertainty. So you have a competitive advantage. Number one, mayors typically 
manage smaller units of people. Um, and small is beautiful. I mean, some of the most successful models we've done are not just in cities, but in countries like, think about Singapore, think about Estonia, think about, I can give you a dozen or so countries like the Scandinavian ones, where they've been very successful at being able to test and model things and roll them out 10 times faster than everybody else because they're not trying to deal with a city the size of uh, Beijing or, 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 or Los Angeles. Um, secondly, um, you need to be global because you need to expand the pool of options that are available to you. The pool of options are going to help you do this mission um, that you want to achieve. Now, you're going to get a ton of ideas this week because you're going to be with ecosystem builders and you're going to be with people who are researchers and people who are analyzing uh, what's working and what's not working in the field. But what if I told you you're not going to compare yourself to 300 other cities in the United States, but you're going to, compare, you're going to be able to knowledge share with 300,000 cities around the world, many of whom are trying to do something with nothing, or as we say in England, on the smell of an oil rag. They're creating its necessity entrepreneurship. They haven't got any choice. There is no foundation down the road that might be able to help uh, fuel the process. So this is really a moment where you've got an opportunity to pull into a bigger pool of knowledge um, and to be able to look, how do I uh, remove these barriers faster? There are some obvious things that, that obviously go without saying. You know, in the old days, people tell you, well, you need to go international um, as a mayor, and that means you need to lead a trade mission to a foreign country. Trade missions may be important, but the, but, but the new model of a trade mission is you need to get inside what your startups are doing and work out how do I open doors for them? How do I create communities, networks, knowledge, um, and, and, and ability for them to be able to think global, even though they're based in a town that people outside the United States may not have heard of? So you're going to open doors to these markets. Um, and then there's, there's three more things. One is that's really important that we're seeing is the emergence of startup tourism. We're very lucky at GEM. We now, last year, we hired 75 managing directors of countries, 75 countries. We hired a new managing director in just one year, just to give you a sense of the scale of interest in this field. And I'll tell you, each one of those guys does what we call startup tourism. Like, if you want to go to their city and you want someone to explain what's going on in the ecosystem, like uh, one of the great guys um, who's here this week is Cameron Cushman from the Coffin Foundation. I bumped into him yesterday and I said, on oh, Monday, and I said, why are you here early? He goes, oh, well, I'm here because I brought people in from Fort Worth and I want to show them the Kansas City startup ecosystem. Like, I want them to breathe it, feel it. Hence, you know, the work the Coffin Foundation is bringing you here so you can actually see what's going on rather than just read about it. That's happening in international cities across the world. Um, you want people to come to your city to see what you're doing. And you want them to come and see the challenges you're facing, the gaps you've got, the barriers you've got to remove. Because you know what? It's a very, very open source environment. And I've yet to meet someone in this field who doesn't turn around and respond to the famous Brad Feld of startup communities ilk, who turned around and said, you know, the first question most entrepreneurs ask is, what can I do to help? This is a generation of entrepreneurs, it's a generation of ecosystem builders who are at heart very generous, and their first thought is not, what am I going to get out of this, but what can I do to help? Okay, two quick things. First of all, political leadership. Um, look, um, I know you guys aren't really politicians, you're just, you're, you're wonderful uh, leaders, um, you're policy makers, but you never have to do politics. I'm kidding, of course. You've got to deal with politics, okay? So some of you guys have got to get elected. You've got to get re-elected. Um, and I just want to say that the mayors we're working with, we've not come across a single mayor that's not been able to leverage the entrepreneurial capital for political reasons. In fact, one of our favorite mayors, who we worked very closely at the very early days of getting our policy work done on the cities, was the mayor of Buenos Aires, and he's now the president of the country. Uh, and one of the cool things about it is all the ideas we piloted in Buenos Aires in his city, and now ideas that he took those learnings and he was able to make them national. So there is a political value to this too. Another reason why you should, you, you should go global. But this is the last one and perhaps the most important one. And what we're finding increasingly, we happen to work with Startup Genome, which uh, does a lot of analysis of um, uh, the assessments of performance and the uh, mapping of uh, city ecosystems. And one of the things that they really focus on is the connectivity between the ecosystems. And the thicker the lines of connection between cities and their entrepreneurial ecosystems, that's directly correlated to the, to the pace at which their ecosystems are growing as measured by the number of startups. So um, you want to be a city that's focused on being connected um, 
Two others, because this connectivity among your ecosystems matters a lot. It matters for you, knowledge creation. It matters you selling the brand of your city. It matters for you because you need to be able to open doors to those startups at that moment where all of a sudden they need it. Remember, they're very on demand. They're not long-term thinkers. They're like, you know what? I need people now, or I need connections in this part of the world. So you need to have that connectivity. All right, how do I get started? Well, um, we've got a lot of things, and if you come to the exchange that's going to occur at 3.30 or 4 this afternoon, you know, we've got an area there, and I'm happy to give you a little light weight for your suitcase, little thing you can take away. Um, and you can go to our website, but we've got a lot of tools, but I'm just going to focus on a couple today that might be useful. First of all, we're doing tons of research at the city uh, level in conjunction with both the Coffin Foundation and a lot of other research partners that are looking at, you know, how are we comparing these cities around performance, funding, market research, market reach, talent, um, and, and so forth. So you want to make sure that your ecosystem is mapped. I mean, we, you know, there are about 25 different methodologies for mapping, ranging from Endeavor Insight to the World Bank to a whole range of other organizations that are figuring out how do I best map a city's ecosystem. If you don't know if your ecosystem is mapped, that's step one when you get home. You've got to work out, do I actually know what our entrepreneurial ecosystem is? As a mayor, you need to know that. What have you got? What have you not got? It may not be a thorough and it may not be a very comprehensive analysis and you may not uh, believe a great deal that it's, it, it's, everything's there, but it's a great start. So um, there are other things, and I just threw this in a few minutes ago, this slide, because, you know, for example, we're, we're uh, building in some parts of the world um, something called Global uh, Enterprise Registration, which is a platform that measures all the uh, business registrations. Because some of the mayors last night told me in the reception, you know, one of our challenges, we're actually not properly registering the businesses as a city that are registering in this city. Now, I just found that, I, I was actually surprised to hear that, but I'm really happy to hear from anybody afterwards about that. We've actually developed a global platform. Actually, we did it with the United Nations and with the State Department, and we're going into countries all over the world that don't have business, business registration platforms set up, and we're setting up business registration platforms. It's fairly simple. It's just like, you know, what are the rules? What are the regulations? What are the things you have to be able to do in, in, in order to start a, a business? So certainly, um, that's something you can be doing, is you can be making sure that, that you've got that in place. We're also in some parts of the world opening campuses. Um, we're not doing this. And the critical thing is you have to know, is this something we have? Do we have, a, do we have a central epicenter where all the startup programs and the startups con conjugated our, uh, in, in, our, in our town or in our community? Um, you know, we discovered it front enough in a city as big as Johannesburg, there wasn't anywhere. We did our international conference there and we wanted to go s visit the city and see all their shared workspaces and there was nothing there. So nine months later, some entrepreneurs from that event, we rolled this out. We got Richard Branson to come down, give it a big star, star display. It's um, 100,000 square feet, which makes us the largest startup campus uh, in, um, in, in, in Africa. So I wanted to point that out to you because it's really um, something you've got to look at. Do we have density? Do we have um, the right kind of uh, connectivity? And, and are we able to bring together diverse actors in one physical place? Now, in many of your towns, you'll find that you've got the opposite problem. You've got a saturated market because of shared workspaces. And if that's the case, forget what I just said. You may not need this. But you've got to look at this and at least ask the question, do we have that place? If I, as the mayor, want to go see what's going on, the president of Iceland every Thursday shows up at a little place in Reykjavik where all the startups hang out. He just goes and sits down and hangs out with them. And uh, he told me he finds it obviously inspirational because they're all glass half full people. Um, and so he finds it you know, a, a room of optimism. But the more important thing, he said, I know where to go Well, I'll just see all these guys. And they're always there 24 seven. So um, that's something that I think uh, you, wanna, you wanna think about. Another way you can get involved on the global level, you can go to events. Of course, we have a big event. You're, of course, I'm naturally obligated to mention ours. Ours is in April every year. Uh, anybody from this conference that wants to come, we'll give you complimentary registration. It's always held in a different country every year. Next year, it's actually in Bahrain. Um, if you like Formula One, it's going to be uh, back on back with the Formula One, which I've never been to, but I hear it's cool. Um, but this is where we bring the leaders of cities, ecosystems from all over the world to share knowledge and share communities and share networks. You can also hold your own event. You could say, you know what, we've got great opportunities in this particular industry, or we think the world does not know enough about what's going on in my city or my town. So you can come to us and we'll give you a license just like TEDx, and you can hold an event and we'll, you know, we'll leave you to it, but we'll try to make connections to you to be able to get people to, to be able to be a part of that. You can also say, you know what, I want to get out there on the speaking circuit. 
Uh, another practical thing you can do, you can turn around and say, hey, how do I actually get out there and get more visibility for my town? We actually think we've got something going here in terms of our, our, our ecosystem. We have a free speakers bureau, which can help uh, give you some visibility among people that are looking for speakers at events. And of course, you know, as, as, as Evan mentioned, you know, we're so proud of Global Entrepreneurship Week. It was a Kaufman uh, invention, the no notion of, you know, we need to go to every single town um, across America and indeed eventually across the world and to be able to celebrate the entrepreneurial spirit, to let the existing entrepreneurs inspire those that are behind them, to get every young person to think at some point in my life, at some point in my career, maybe I might be able to be on a team that could sort of birth the new, figure out another way of doing something, or be able to create a job, as has often been said, rather than take a job. And if you're not doing Global Entrepreneurship Week, I'd like to ask uh, Yuval over here to stand up, if you could, Yuval Yarden, who's uh, originally from Philadelphia, but uh, from the startup ecosystem there in that city, but she's now um, ga gathering our, our, our national communities across the country to celebrate Global Entrepreneurship Week. Um, you know, it's kind of fun. It's basically 35,000 events that all occur in one week across the world. So, you know, if you do something, it's a chance for you to, quote, have some global connections, do some global events and activities. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to end with what we really needed to start on, which is policy. This is the unique thing you bring to your ecosystem. And let me just tell you, as I said before, all the actions happening at the city level, in case you hadn't noticed, there's not a lot going on on the public policy agenda for entrepreneurship in Washington right now. So all of the actions on the city level. You guys have a lot of things that you can be doing. Um, so, so, um, so obviously, number one, in an era where your entrepreneurs are creating new regulatory challenges as a result of um, uh, disrupting highly regulated industries, um, it's mayors that are going to have to deal with what on earth do I do when I have an Uber that comes along and challenges me to have to make a decision, are they a taxi cab company or are they a tech platform? Um, so secondly, you've seen an explosion of interest from governments in getting involved in entrepreneurship. So your job as a mayor is to help guide that in a useful and constructive direction. So you can capitalize on the fact that's happening all over the world. In fact, that it's mayors that compete to hold our, our annual policy event, which we hold in November every year. I think we're going to bring this to Kansas City next time. But, but the next one this November is in Surabaya. I mean, Surabaya is the mayor is leading all the entrepreneurship policy work there. Um, and um, so certainly, I think there's a lot of other mayors that you can learn from uh, through that engagement with the other governments. Um, and, and finally, you know, um, this, is, this is what we really are going to kick off with your exercise. I'm, I'm just your, uh, your, 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 your talker up here on stage to transition you um, into, uh, into, your next, uh, into your next exercise, which um, you're going to get some much more intelligent coaching on. Uh, but let me just give you a, a little bit of background on this as a transition. So this is called the, uh, the, the policy canvas. So this is a very simple tool where I'm holding my iPhone because I was watching the clock and I realized it's been here all the time, sorry. Um, but this is, a, this is a tool to allow you to try to take a very simple approach to working out, especially if you're new to the field of entrepreneurship uh, policies and you, you, know, you may know about you know, the fact that licensing issues in your city matters to entrepreneurs. You may know about you know, some of the issues that have emerged, but this helps you to really identify by listening to entrepreneurs and your ecosystem builders in your, 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 your town, what are the things that matter most? Um, and um, we've built this, we, we designed this actually, we rolled it out in Estonia last year and Evan came and, and saw this. And we've done it parallel with something we call the policy hack. So the general idea here is, is and let me just sort of walk you through this process. You're first of all going to have stakeholder discussions, um, but you're going to have ownership of those discussions. And that's something that the canvas gives you. But through the canvas being simple, a simple tool that you're about to experience, uh, you're going to be able to build the airplane in the air. You've all heard that famous expression from LinkedIn founder. Uh, uh, but this, what this really means is it's lean theory. It's the notion that you're able to go through the iterative process of testing things and then feeding that data back into it. So you develop it on the ground with everybody rather than uh, dr having it driven by necessarily by policy research advisors that, that, that claim that they would know the answers. Um, 
And um, you're able to, the, the value of being in control of this is you're able to make sure that it's shaped to the people that you think that really matter. A lot of the time, you know, there are groups in your community politically that hijack issues. So you can turn around and say, I'm actually looking to remove this particular barrier, or we've got this particular opportunity that we're not taking advantage of. And so it helps you to really focus and target that. And you're going to get more on this process, but basically you're going to go through and say, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? Uh, who would benefit from this policy and who are the people who are affected by it also negatively. You're going to look at uh, what's the main impact that I want to achieve, what are the key metrics to measure, uh, and what the success look like. Um, you're going to look at uh, what now that you've clearly defined the problem uh, and who has it. The, the, you're going to look at uh, what are the, the right policy interventions, how would they work, what are some of the risks um, associated with these, political and otherwise. Um, who are the partners that can help you deliver this? Um, and if you're using intermediaries, how will you get them involved and how will you roll it out? What would the costs uh, be involved in this and, and the, these proposed, proposed interventions? Um, whether they're an accelerator, I was earlier in the data session around measuring the performance of accelerators and the first question came up was, how do I know whether I need an accelerator? Well, this is what this, this, this policy canvas is going to do. It's going to help you identify what you think the priorities are and what are the potential revenues and particularly you know, the unexpected benefits of this. But the key thing and the really fun part of this and the challenge I gave you just in case you decide to go down this road is we've then created something called the uh, policy hack. And what we do, and we tested this in Estonia, and what you do is, let's say you're testing something in your city. You think you've got buy-in, you think you've got budget, you think you've got some partners, you think you've defined your problem, and you're feeling pretty good about this. And because this is simple, you as a mayor actually understand it as opposed to some staff expert who's trying to tell you what to do. You're actually involved in this, and you're thinking, I actually get this, this is really interesting. Now, what we do is we create these global hacks where you come, sometimes with your team, and we put you with other teams who've already gone through exactly the same process, and you then hack it together. And they tell us, ah, oh, yeah, we tried that out. We tried to roll that out. We had this, this, and this problem. You're like, ah, OK. So you're going through this whole policy canvas process again, but you're going through it effectively with strangers. And of course, you know, there's, there's rules in the room, which is you don't, you know, this doesn't get disclosed too broadly, but you're basically getting together with your peers, sometimes on the other side of the world, and getting fascinating insights, ideas, you know, innovative ideas and, and, and uh, ways that you can enhance this and improve it before you publicly roll it out. We're doing it with both ministers and governments and we're doing it with, with mayors. And the value of this is you're able to test it with a very diverse audience. Um, uh, shall I say diverse, uh, not a large audience, but a very diverse group of people. So bottom line is we'll bring people in to hack your idea and say, will it work in your city? So um, without further ado, I think I'm just uh, a minute over my time here. So I want to say thank you for having me. Uh, I'm going to be around for the next three days. Uh, I, I wore a different color suit today, so you might be able to you know, find me. But I also finally want to uh, just point out uh, one other person in addition to Yuval who's done the work. I think if Mark's here, um, Mark Marriage, maybe he's not, but I think Christina's here. So Christina, would you stand up? Christina is the inventor of our whole policy hack process. She's our vice president of policy. She's doing all the work with the mayors around the world. So if you want to talk to someone that really knows what she's talking about, uh, Christina Fernandez, and she'll be around. We'll be in the sessions. And um, once again, to Kaufman, thank you for having me. It's really been awesome. Appreciate it.